Just let us know when to, when to start. Okay, and don't forget to identify yourself on camera, okay? Yes. Okay. My name is Enoch Muhammad. I'm a co-creator of Hip Hop Detox. It's a public health organization that works with teens, young adults, and the service providers that work with our community. Our whole goal is to help teens, young adults, and the community deal with their social emotional issues, but also those things that are considered the root causes that we want to change. To my left, I have Father Swager, pastor of Sons of Finance. To my right, we have Ron Swager, pastor of Sons of Finance. That's Che. And of course, we got our other brother here, T.O. Hardiman, executive director of Chicago Ceasefire, or Illinois Ceasefire. One of the things we wanted to do with this Unity Press Conference is just make it real plain that we will not make change until we begin to see unity as a key element of change. This is a multifaceted problem with multifaceted solutions, and we need multiple peoples to work together to find ways and stretch to make unity real so we can make change sustainable. It should not be where we have our pastor here working 28 hours mm -hmm. to, to try to make change and keep change when there are so many people that are benefiting from the work he does. My brother Ryan Fest, he's just been ablaze. You know, I mean, he's just been working to try to find ways to make change because he has done and is still doing what he does on the music side, but when it comes to the activism and being on the streets, he's looking for where are the workers. And all I can say about T.O., is that T.O. is not only looking for the same thing, but he's saying, look, if you all don't want to help, we're going to keep on interrupting. Mm, we're right. going to keep on finding ways to make change. So I wanted you all to get an opportunity to meet each and every one of them again, but in the light of us forging unity, because unity is real. Also, we have in the audience various organizations, various peoples that are working to make this change sustainable. I want us to give a hand to our brother Leonard Farrakhan Muhammad here. Give him a hand because he has allowed us to start something here for the community and not just here in the Auburn Gresham area, but for the city of Chicago. All those who say we want our youth and our community to come together and break these generational divides. And I support an initiative that help us to display our talents, our gifts, our skills, and our abilities. And so we are at the Peace Palace of the People mm -hmm. Salon Restaurant That's here right. in Auburn Gresham. And right. this jewel is something and some uh, place for all of us. We should see it as a destination point where we all can come, bring our families, and enjoy the cuisine and the ambiance here. So without further delay, give a hand to our brother, Pastor Father Flager. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Enoch, and uh, thank you, Brother Leonard, for hosting us here. Um, it's so right that we're at a place called as Salaam Alaikum. It's a place of peace. That's right. Sir. And it's right that we seek peace and that have places of peace right here on 79th Street. So I thank God for this great facility. Um, I just kind of want to say that, echo the same thing Enoch said, is that, you know, we need everybody to come together. We need government to come in with infrastructure. We need corporate to come in with jobs. We need the education system to make sure the schools are good and excellent for all of our children. But if we're going to reach the community, then we have to come together, and we have to reach our young people. Right. And that's through reaching out on the streets like all these folks up here do. That means loving our brothers and sisters in the streets, respecting them, helping them achieve their goals, and not just demonizing them. And it means reaching them with the arts. We've got to take what they've been drawn into, the negative of the arts. We've got to grab hold of those brilliant minds and redirect them to the positive of the arts. We want to get in those minds. Other people have taken them and perverted them and used them for their own game, particularly the major white media companies that are taking them, paying them money, and, and perverting them, and then throwing them back out to the street when they don't want to use them anymore. But what we need to do is get those brilliant minds first and set a new standard and say, this is what it means in the arts. This is what it means in hip hop. This is what it means as rap. And that's why it's so important that we come together as brothers and as sisters up here to say, we're gonna reach the young minds before you do and because it's the future of our city, the future of our country. And guess what? All the answers we need to violence, they're sitting right here in that's front right. of you. This is the group we need to reach to. Thank you. That's right. We are a partner of St. Sabina and the Ark of St. Sabina. We have a music studio apprenticeship program. And where is Jocelyn Jones? Jocelyn Jones right here is the executive director of the Ark of St. Sabina. Please give her a hand. 
we're going to bring up our brother, give a hand to Ryan Fest. Hey. So, I want to thank Brother Enoch Muhammad, Father Flager, Teal Hardiman, Amina, you know, all of the, the brothers and sisters, the young people that are here. We have a host of common problems in our community. And what I see that we need is uncommon <coughs> solutions. And when you ask where do uncommon solutions come from, they come from the creatives, the artists. They come from the people who dream right before they go to bed, who, who dream when they wake up, who dream when they're working. You know, the, the artists have the uncommon solutions to our common problems. And when I, as I traveled the world, I saw artists being put to use in communities to beautify communities, to come up with uh, 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 creative solutions to problems in Sweden and in education in France. And artists are being used all over the world. They should be used in Chicago. And where do artists uh, uh, come from? Artists shouldn't just come from YouTube. Mm -hmm. Artists shouldn't come go. from, you know, I heard it on GCI and now I'm going to emulate it because mm -hmm. I think that that can help me get out of the ghetto. Artists come from St. Sabina. Mm -hmm. Artists come from Salam. Mm -hmm. Artists come from that local businessman on the, on the, that, that you grew up with that gave you advice as you were growing up. Right. They showed you how to dress. They showed you how to present yourself. That's right. Artists come from communities yeah. that care about their children. Mm -hmm. And so as a community, I'm just so blessed and I'm so thankful that Brother Enoch has invited us here today to show us how he is culturing and cultivating new artists. And when he invited me here, it was incumbent, and it's my duty, it is my responsibility as an artist, as someone with experience and, and you know, around the world, to come back and impart that experience and to learn. You know, um, I was once told, what does a, a black belt do? Oh, I was asked the question, what does a black belt do after they, you know, got their black belt and they've done everything? I said, well, you know, I don't know. What do they do? They're black belts. They say they take the belt off and they go back and start training again. Mm -hmm. right. right. Because there's something that they're not learning that the new people know right. that right. are coming right. up. Right. And so I've taken off my black belt. And I'm here today to learn from the artists that are in the community. And thank you so much, brother. Thank you. Enoch, for inviting Go ahead. Thank you. Very good. I want the media to understand that we're not calling out, we're calling in people. From our brother No ID, who's at Def Jam, to some of the family members we have at Interscope, we have to call people in because on the commercial side and the industry side, we need to give a balance. When it comes to those who don't care to get a commercial deal, we have to be the ones to go. give ourselves a deal because go. we have conscious, positive, powerful artists. And I'm not just talking about artists. We have those behind the scenes, those who are engineers, right. those who want right. to build the studios, right. those who say, I want to take my mathematical ability, my scientific ability, I want to use it on higher levels. We have to not be boxed in. And I want to give a shout out to my girl, FM Supreme, back there. I, I, I need to make sure I, she just came back from London. And she represents one of those kind of artists that she's not going to stop her positive, conscious artistry. And her pastor, Reverend Wright, told her, hey, come on over here, because it's time for us to unite. Please give a hand to my brother, T.O. Hardiman. I'm T.O. Hardiman, uh, representing Ceasefire, Illinois. And I just want to say that I really support Hip Hop Detox is the real deal, and it's a public health model. That really mm. works. It's very effective in getting to the minds of our young brothers and sisters. Now Marvin Gaye say, "What's going on?" Mm -hmm. Okay. N.W.A. said, "Fight the power and public enemy." Really. So music is really uh, a way to really express yourself and take people's raise people's consciousness <laughs> to a higher level. And that's so important because if you look back at all the inter entertainers, even during the Renaissance mm -hmm. period, the Black Renaissance period, period, you had great thinkers and you had intellectual people. Right now, I feel in Chicago, we've lost that intellectual edge to a degree. It's going to mm -hmm. take brothers like Enoch Muhammad. Ryan Fest, myself, sister, me, and Father Flager to bring it back. I feel like a rapper myself right now. <laughs> so the reality is that we all stand in unity today because that's what Brother Enoch talked about because it's not we cannot do it by ourselves. What Enoch brings to the table is hip-hop detox. And do you all agree we need to detox off some of the hip-hop? Not all of the hip-hop, but some of the hip-hop. So that we can learn our way in more effective ways and raise the consciousness of our people like our mighty ancestors did. So I just want to say that I'm here in support. Thank you. Thank you.
We define hip hop not by what's on the radio. Yes, sir. We define hip hop as being truth without boundaries. Right. And the detox is to remove the poison. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about all poison. And it's a process. There's no silver bullet. But I have to make sure that I give our sister the firepower over here that's part of Cease Fire. If you have some words to share, sister, please. I'm thankful that you were able to come and attend. Give a hand to our sister Amina. The reason why I just I turned around and I saw this baby. And he was standing beside behind myself and Ryan Fest and 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 we could not see him from as you not say we're calling outside in. We're not calling anybody out. So this is our future. This is my future. When I stand here at Salams and, and I see the young faces in front, you all are not understanding the history. See, one thing that, that our community and when we have to detox and we, we talk to our young brothers and our young sisters about Chicago and, 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 and I've had an opportunity and I've been blessed to, to visit those places that Ryan Fest is, I've been to Sweden, Stockholm, and, and Bergen, Norway, and you know, and, and, and all praises due to Allah that I came back safe and I can talk about what's going on in Chicago, but Chicago is a, we a trendsetter, man. Mm, right. We set it all over from here across the pond, as they say. So when I'm looking at our future, when I'm looking at my future, this is the trend that is going to be set five years from now. Even look at him now. Look at him. He got on a trend. He's right here. He's in front of us. And he looks good. That's right. He looks good. He looks clear. And we have to continue to keep them clear. When you're sitting in salams, why don't you check as one of these brothers, what is this place? What does it mean to be here on 79th Street? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of history, lot of black right. history. Yes, sir. I'm not just talking about from the Nation of Islam. I'm not talking about from uh, the, the Islamic culture. I'm not talking about from the spiritual foundation of our brothers and sisters that have lost their lives. I'm talking not about the nonsense that we got going on right now. We're talking about that at put their lives on the line for our young brothers and sisters to go to school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. To go to school. Right. <clears throat> to go to school in Chicago. I know you all can't even fathom about fighting to get to go in to get to some education. Mm -hmm. But what we can understand is fighting because somebody looked at us in that wrong way. See, we got to look at the history of where we're at. This is a beautiful place. There's brothers that have passed away and returned to, I pray, Jenna, to Allah, that when they put the work in, and I mean some real work, to make sure that we, as African Americans, we, as Latinos, we, as human beings of the lower class, will not be slighted, that we will not be overlooked, that some of your grandparents and great-grandparents was able to work and go to school because of the history that was set in Chicago, in Inglewood, in Woodlawn. Mm -hmm. So you all have to understand where you're at, you do, in order to know really for real where you want to go. Because if you don't understand where you're at, you don't have a clue on where you want to go, but to the nearest corner that is nothing there for you. You have a beautiful world. We have a beautiful world. We have a beautiful city. Right. And I need for us to take part of that. So I'm going to close with this. I had a 17-year-old with me some months ago. We did a, a summit, Tio and I, and we, we got them up out of Inglewood because they were fighting each other in the community that they lived in. And they couldn't get on the same bus with one another. So I put them in my car and we rolled down Lakeshore Drive. And this 17-year-old had his boy that was sitting next to me ask her, ask her, <laughs> 